My name is Brian Gilly, and this is my storied life. I grew up in Bozeman, Montana. My dad's name uh, was Ron Gilly, and uh, my mother's name was Jean Gilly. So we had four siblings. Uh, my older sister, Rhonda, was two, four years older than me. Forrest is two years older than me, and Sandy is two years younger than me. So well, the one thing is, uh, my dad moved around a lot. He was in car dealers, and he always seemed to be looking for a better job. The grass was always greener, and so he moved around a lot, and that's what brought him into Helena in the first place. And then we moved from Helena to Lewiston, Idaho. I ended up going to high school in three different uh, states. Uh, I was a sophomore in uh, Helena, Montana. I was a junior in um, Lewiston, Idaho. Dad moved down to California, Sacramento, California, and that's where I graduated from. I met most of my friends in high school in Lewiston, Idaho, which uh, Randy Spray, who was like one of my best friends and still is, and happens to be married to my youngest sister, Sandy. He's been a good friend ever since, so I'm lucky to have him. And uh, when I graduated from Sacramento, California, when I came back to Lewiston, Idaho, um, and with my friends, and uh, I got a job at the pea factory, it was Smith's Peas. And um, it was a good job, and we were having fun. It was an all graveyard shift. What I had to do was uh, uh, thaw out the freezers. The peas went through the freezers. It was like five of them. And each hour I'd have to go up on the roof and actually duck under this these wires, which I thought were pulleys. And so I'd have to duck under them as I went out the door, screen door. And then I had to jump about two feet from one building to the next. They didn't have any planking or anything. It was just part of the job. And, and then turn some valves and I thought out that one refrigerator that the peas were through, uh, thought out. And then I'd go, you know, wait around and, uh, for an hour and then I'd go do another one. So I did this all night long and I could read and do, it was a great job. I didn't do hardly anything except doing that. These wires that were on the roof Cables, I thought it was a pulley system. It didn't look like live cables to me. Well, I guess it was. The one night that I went up there, I was bebopping along, opened it up, ducked under the cables, and jumped from the one building to the next. And I thought I would Tarzan through. So I would grab these cables. I grabbed these two cables and I got electrocuted. And I was in total shock. I mean, all I could hear was a buzzing noise. My jaw was open. Um, I couldn't feel anything except pain from being electrocuted. And so my mind went um, to where I, could, I couldn't feel anything, but I could hear the buzzing. So I knew I was still on the wire. And my mind went to be like a computer. And uh, so, you know, I, t I told myself, okay, kick off. And I could feel my knees lock. And I tried to open my hands. It went through like a computer, like A, B, C. Okay, try this, try this, try this. Nothing would work. Nothing would work. And, uh, but I knew I was still on the wire because I could hear the noise, the buzzing of the, the, the wire of being electrocuted. But I didn't, I didn't feel anything at this point. And then I saw the tunnel um, that they all talk about with the light in the middle. And so, and I saw this tunnel. And through this whole time, I'm not thinking of God. I'm not thinking of Christ. I'm, I'm thinking of a lot of things. I mean, it's like your mind's thinking of all sorts of different things. All of a sudden, I'm in this tunnel. And I still can hear the buzzing, but not very, very loud. And I'm going through the tunnel, through towards the light. And it was like a, a light, like an arc welder. I mean, that was how bright it was. And I start seeing myself on the wire in, in my mind or whatever. 
I'm floating. I see myself on the wire being electrocuted. And I screamed, um, I'm too young for this. Lord, you know, help me. And uh, I yelled, God, I'm screaming in my mind. And uh, help me. And all of a sudden, I'm on the, the roof of the, the P factory, the building. And, I, and I'm in convulsions, but I'm off the wire. And I thought, well, gosh, I could die of this. Well, in any case, um, I got up. My chest was way out here. And uh, I went down to the office and told them, tried to tell them what's going on. I couldn't talk. I couldn't speak. And they knew something was up. So they took me to the hospital. And uh, everything was fine. But the problem was I had some really mental issues um, where I would see things, almost like you're psycho, where you'd be in the shower and you feel like someone's going to stab you. And I would see, uh, like even with my back against the wall, hands coming through my throat or some really weird stuff. And I had read <clears throat> that uh, people getting electrocuted were hallucinating in that that way. And um, I couldn't go to sleep. And so I kind of used the power of positive thinking and, uh, and Christ, and uh, I can do anything through Christ who strengthens me. And the, his philosophy of positive thinking to fight these uh, negative thoughts. And it worked. And uh, I thought that any good act be it small, has a huge effect in the world. And that's what I tried to do all my life. And then when I got out of the service, I um, went to the University of Montana where my sister Sandy and my brother Forrest were there and uh, Kelly, my future wife. And uh, we got married and I never did finish school because of, uh, well, mainly because I didn't have enough discipline to finish, but also economically, you know, finances. So I had to work, I was working two jobs and I had to uh, work to make ends meet and she did too. And I was uh, driving a tanker truck and then uh, she was working at Hennessy's at a retail store and we had Ryan my firstborn son, and then uh, we had Lynn, and she was born with her umbilical cord wrapped around her neck. And so she was a vegetable. She had uh, cerebral palsy, what the general uh, name was. And so we took care of her, and uh, Kelly at that time then got into real estate, and at that time, again, I was still driving the truck. And then I worked at uh, Pacific Fruit and Produce, you know, just trying to make ends meet as a young couple with two kids. Uh, we dealt with uh, Lynn and she would have seizures quite a bit. And, and we were told, of course, that she wouldn't uh, live very long. And, but we did the best by her and she, uh, she, she was great. I loved her to death. But the problem was there was not a lot of work in Missoula. And uh, I got a job uh, in, in Lewiston, Idaho at Potlatch Corporation in the sawmill. Uh, Kelly didn't want to go because she had networked with uh, uh, all the teachers and all the different people for Lynn. So she had uh, a lot of uh, stuff for Lynn. Um, and, but she did go. She, you know, I was appreciative of that. She did go and we uh, rented a house in, uh, it was right on the border. You had Lewis and Idaho. And then you had across the river, Clarkson, Washington. Well, you could get more benefits for Lynn by being in Clarkson, Washington. So that's where we moved. And that's where I brought up my, uh, rest of my boys. Tyler and Morgan. Now Lynn, she passed away not much longer after we moved. I, we, were, we were going to Helena 
uh, to the neurologist and she had passed and Ryan actually uh, found her and that was a heck of a thing that he had to do uh, I think he was seven at the time and he found her in the in the crib um, she had passed the night before and so he had to come and tell us and then it was very sad and uh, uh, but um, then Kelly she went back to school in special ed so uh, Lynn brought a lot of meaning to our lives. <laughs> so, and, uh, you know, so anyway, we think about her all the time. That's not fair. Anyway, so when we had the funeral, we had tons of people. And I thought, how can a three-year-old bring all these people into church? And she had touched their lives as well as ours. And we all touched each other's lives because we were involved in a group called Families Together, which had to do with special needs kids. And Kelly and I were very much involved in that. And uh, it was um, a great experience. And it was a short time in our life, but it was a wonderful time. So, uh, Anyway, so Kelly, like I said, she finished school 4.0 and we got her master's in special ed and uh, because of Lynn and because of the experiences we had with Lynn. And she became a wonderful teacher and, uh, and we met a lot of good people through that. So uh, it was odd uh, to see all these people at the funeral for me, it was odd, uh, but it, it also shows that butterfly effect. You know, when you do something good for someone and it affects them more than you think, and it's passed around to another family or to another person, you just don't know where it's gonna stop. And uh, I believe in that, you know, all of us should believe in that. It's positive. And uh, even, even the bad stuff can be um, very positive and affect everyone in a positive way. It's almost like, uh, you know, when you do a favor for somebody, if you can't return it and pass it on, and I believe that, so you do that.